In the previous video, we saw how forward pass works for multi-label classification in an artificial neural network. In this video, we're gonna see how backward pass works from scratch. Hello everyone and welcome to ML Done. So let's get started, let's get our hands dirty, right? So this is the type of uh, neural network that we saw before. We've got our sigmoid functions, you've got two units out there, um, and you've got loads of weights in the middle, right? Now, um, we have y hat, which is our predictions, we, uh, we have our y, which is the ground truth vector, and we've got our error vector, right? Now, what I want to do is, let's say we did, we did our forward pass and we predicted some, uh, you know, y hat, uh, let's say, whatever. So let, let's call this y hat uh, 1 and let's call this y hat 2. We have our, uh, our ground truth, so this is basically y1 and this is basically y2. And then you can compute uh, components of our error vector. You can call this E1 and then E2. And I said that we actually can sum up these two components to sort of aggregate to one a unique error value, right? Now, what I want to do today is I want to grab one of these error vectors, sorry, one of the elements of my, my error vector and do back propagation all the way back, all the way back to the input to this neuron, right? To the output neuron. Uh, let's call this um, Z1, right? And the reason I don't want to go any further is because anything after that is just like any other backpropagation and any other chain rule. So I want to show you how backpropagation works in multi-label classification. And the only bit that has changed compared to a multi-class classification is this ending bit, right? Anything after sigmoid where you have multiple, you know, uh, binary cross entropy error functions and you have all these sigmoid units on the output, right? So I want to go all the way back only to the pre-activations of your final uh, layer, which are your Z vectors, uh, Z vector, right? Uh, so this is Z1, this is Z2. You can think of this as Z2, right? And this is my error function, right? We've already seen this before. Um, now, let's see. Let's compute the gradient of the error. Let's say the first element with respect to Z1. And the reason I'm not using i and j, I want to make you feel comfortable with this whole thing, right? And later on, I'll show you the general rule for any indices of your choice. But for now, let's just get as simple as possible. Um, and by the way, don't worry, uh, worry about these rules here. So we're going to get to them in a minute. So e1 is not a direct function of z1, but it is a direct function of your prediction y hat 1, right? It's not a direct function of y hat 2, but y hat 1, the first element of your prediction vector. Uh, and that is where, what we use to actually compute this gradient because we can use the chain rule to go through the intermediate variable, which is your y hat 1, to get to z1. Right. So according to the chain rule, which I hope that you guys are familiar with, first we compute the gradient of the error with respect to y hat 1 times now y hat 1 of course is a direct function of my z1 so this multiplication will give me the gradient of e1 with respect to z1 right now so you see my error function right you see you see the uh, the formula here so let's compute this let's call this bit one, and let's call this bit two. And let's start with the first chunk. So the gradient of this error function with respect to a given y hat, in this case, let's call it y, y hat one. So let's consider this first, this first bit first, this first bit. So the gradient of that bit of the error with respect to uh, y hat 1, and this is where you can actually consider these i indices to be exactly 1, right? y1 and y hat 1. So I leave that to you to imagine. 
Now, this is a multiplication, right? So the derivative of a multiplication is the derivative of this guy times this guy plus the derivative of this guy times this guy, right? These are the basics that I assume you're familiar with. Now, the derivative of the first chunk, which is this guy, with respect to y hat is zero, right? Independent. Times the entire of the second term, y hat i, which in our case is y hat one, right? This thing, time, sorry, plus the derivative of this chunk now, with respect to y hat one, times the first term. Now, this is where, well, times the first term, let me just write it here, times minus y1, let me just write it here. Now, let's see, the derivative of this guy with respect to y hat i. So, the derivative of the natural log of a given u, which is a function of x, with respect to x, is equal to the derivative of that u with respect to x divided by that entire function ux, right? So here uh, you want to compute the gradient of natural log logarithm of y hat i with respect to y hat i. Now y hat i is not a function of y hat i. It is, I mean, it's a like a you know linear function of it. But if you want to go according to this formula, so the derivative of y hat i with respect to itself is one divided by the thing itself. Now, y hat i would be, or y hat 1 in our example, would be in the denominator. And that is times minus y1. This minus comes here. Let's keep minus here. Now, let's look at the second term, the second multiplication. Again, the same story. The derivative of the first term with respect to y hat 1 is 0, right? Has nothing to do with y hat 1. So 0 times ln of 1 minus y hat i is going to be 0. So I'm not going to be writing it, okay? Just to keep it simple. Now, the derivative of this guy times this entire term. So times this entire term. Let me write it here, just so we won't forget it. 1. And C. How can I compute the derivative of, of this guy with respect to y hat, uh, y hat 1? So, you see, this guy over here is my, is my function u, which is a function of y hat 1, right? It's 1 minus y hat 1. The derivative of ln of a function of y hat 1 with respect to y hat 1. How should I compute that? According to our rule here, First, you compute the gradient of that function with respect to y hat 1. So in this case, it's just minus 1 because, you see, this is the mul multiplier by y hat 1, right? So you get minus 1 here, divided by the function itself, right? So you get 1 minus y hat 1 in the denominator. So this entire thing is only for number one, right? So let's just simplify this. So zero multiplied by that term is zero. You don't need to worry about that. This term, this term becomes very simple, becomes uh, minus y1, which is the first element of your ground truth, divided by the corresponding element of the prediction vector. Right, now let's go with this chunk. First of all, this minus and this minus cancel out, so you don't need to worry about that. Let's keep it a plus. You get 1 minus y1 divided by 1 minus y hat 1. Great. That's it. We got the first piece of the puzzle. 
Now, let's go to number two, the derivative of y hat one with respect to z one. And that is where we're gonna be using rule number two. Let me just write number two, that'd be easier. Two, right? Remember, y hat one is a sigmoid function of z one. So it's a sigmoid function of some input called z one. Now, the derivative of a sigmoid with respect to its input is according to this rule, num uh, rule number two over here. It is the sigmoid itself times one minus that sigmoid of that input, right? And if you don't know how this rule works and the proof of this rule, I have a beautiful video, which happens to be one of my popular videos, as few as I have at the moment. Um, so I'm gonna put the link somewhere at the top of the top of the screen. So make sure you check that out just to understand how this thing has been computed and just to understand the proof of it. So the derivative of y hat one with, with respect to z one, because y hat one is a sigmoid function of z one, you can simply say that becomes the sigmoid itself, which is y hat one, times one minus the sigmoid. Right? So that's it. This is this is the second chunk. Right. Now, remember, how did we start all of this mess? We wanted to compute number one and number two, and then we want to multiply them together just to get what we were looking for in the, in the first place. So let's multiply one and two together. If I start from left to right, it would be probably easier. Minus y hat one times You know something? Actually, if we, maybe not, maybe not, yeah, I think it's easier this way. So we have y hat one here minus y one plus here you have one minus y hat one and here you got one minus y one, right? So, and the, you know, the multiplication is actually very simple. You actually multiply across each one of the elements in, in these two brackets, right? So first, the first multiplication, which is this term times this term, y hat one gets canceled out. And what you end up with is gonna be minus y one times one minus y hat one. And then let's go again, this term, but this time times this term. Right? This time 1 minus y hat 1 is cancelled out and you end up with y hat 1 times 1 minus y 1. I hope that I haven't made a mistake so far. I'm a little bit nervous and you remember that the, the multiplication of these two is actually the derivative of the error, the first element of the error with respect to that particular z. Right? So let me just uh, you know, simplify this expression. So to get what we were looking for, the derivative of my, the first element of my error with respect to this particular z, which is z1, is the simplification of this mess. So here we have minus y1 plus y1 times y hat one plus y hat one minus y hat one y one. Yes. So you notice that this term and this term get canceled out because they're identical, only negated of one another. And you end up with the simple expression, which is y hat one minus y one. Actually, you can generalize this to this formula. So the derivative of the error the ith element of the error with respect to z i is the ith element of the prediction vector minus the ith element of your ground truth vector. That's it. That's, that's how it's done. As simple as that. There we go. <clears throat> So this is what we did. We took the derivative of this 
I, of a given element of my error vector uh, of the error vector, and we did back propagation. Use chain rule to carry the gradient all the way to the uh, the input bit of our final layer, and the rest is just like any other uh, chain rule based back propagation in in any artificial neural network. Now, one last thing that I want to point out here is that uh, you might say, okay you're taking the derivative of a given element of the error vector, but what about the actual error, which is the ag aggregate value of these two elements together? So the actual error is actually uh, E1 plus E2, isn't it? Right? Now, this again doesn't change much, so if you wanted to compute the derivative of the entire error with respect to a given z, right? Say z1. You know, so it becomes the derivative of the first element of the error vector with respect to z1 plus the derivative of the second element of the vect error vector with respect to z1 or zi or whatever z you want. Now you notice immediately that uh, the second element of the error vector has nothing to do with z1, absolutely nothing. z1 is here and the second element is here. They have no connection. So automatically this thing is eliminated. It's zero, literally zero. So you end up with computing only the first term. Now, if you were to compute the same thing, but only with respect to say Z2, this time it is the first element of the error vector, this guy, that has nothing to do with Z2, right? So this chunk gets zero that, and it's gonna be only this chunk that will matter. So obviously then here you will have Z2 here and Z2 here, right? Okay, that's it. That's backpropagation for multi-label classification. Now, in the next video, I will most likely walk you through some sort of, you know, implementation, maybe in PyTorch implementation of multi-label classification in an artificial neural network. Now, I will either code it up myself um, or I will find a nice code on Kaggle uh, competitions and, uh, you know, go through the code with you guys and to, uh, I want to make sure that you'll understand the implementation side of things as well as the mathematical side of things. Thank you so much!